What's your dream university? Stanford. Oxford. LSE. McGill. Cambridge. What about you? AUS. 迈向世界名校的阶梯，首选辅仁国际学校。We are now on the second part of the orientation concerning course information. FIS courses, Singapore Cambridge GCE A-level 24-month program and 18-month program. We have Singapore Cambridge GCE O-level 24-month program and 18-month program as well. Third, we have the Cambridge A-level 24 months and 18 months, the Cambridge IGC SE, 24 months and 18 months. Cambridge Lower Secondary School, 12 months or 24 months. We also have the preparatory course of International English Language Testing System, or better known as IELTS, which is our six-month program as well. Preparatory courses for SAT, we have a six-month program for this. And finally, we have the foundation studies for O-level and A-level of a six-month course. A typical Singapore education pathway usually begins with primary school for six years. They then have to take the PSLE examination to get them into secondary school, which is then for four years. O-level examination is then um, O-level examination is taken to get them into the JC or the junior college, which is for two years. After they completed their A-level examination, they are able to enter the university. FIS academic pathway, there is the lower secondary 12 months or two years. There's the GCE O-level 18 months or two years. GCE A-level and CIE A-level 18 months or two years. Coming back to the GCE O-level, you will find that it has, they can go into BCA Academic Diploma, which is a three-year program, or they can also go to the foundation courses of universities, a minimum of one year. Finally, another part that the O-Levels can do is can go to Polytech Private Institution for the Diploma of three years. Looking down at GCE A-Levels and CIE Levels, they can go directly to over local or overseas universities with this degree of three to four years. One more thing concerning the O-level, they, after they've completed the Polytech or private institution, they also can go to the local overseas university as well. Local universities in Singapore are National University of Singapore, NUS, Nanyang Technological University, Singapore, NTU, Singapore Management University, SMU, Singapore University of Technology and Design, SUTD, Singapore Institution of Technology, and finally, Singapore University of Social Scientists, SUSS, formerly known as SIM. The difference was between GCEA level and ICIE level. There's the examination authorities, we have here under the CIEA level, the Cambridge Assessment International Examination. The difference we have here in Singapore GCE level, A level, you have three parts. Cambridge Assessment International Examination, the Ministry of Education Singapore, and Singapore Examination and Assessment Board, SEAB. All universities in UK, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada same recognition, but entry requirements may vary. Finally, we have Singapore universities, NUS, NTU, SUTD, and SMU. The CIA results may be less favorable as compared to Singapore GCEA level. If you're planning to go to universities in Singapore, it is best to take the GCE, and that is best pre preferred. Age requirements for CIE A level is 24 months at least 15 years of age, 18 months at least 14 years of age. Under the Singapore GCE A level, you have to be at least 16 years old for 24 months or 17 years old for 18 months. The academic requirements that we have under CIE A level is the 24 months completed 
at least Singapore's secondary for education and obtain a pass in English subject at Singapore's secondary for level or equivalent to country of origin. Under the GCE A level, it's a 24 months completed at least a Singapore secondary for education and obtain a pass in English subject of Singapore secondary for level or equivalent in country of origin. Under the 18 month program we have here completed at least Singapore pre-university one education and obtain a pass in an English subject at Singapore pre-university one level or equivalent in country of origin. Under the 18 months program of GCE, A level we have completed at least a Singapore pre-university one education and obtain a pass in an English subject at Singapore pre-university one level or equivalent in country origin. Under commencement, 24 months January or July and 18 months is always in July. Under the Singapore GCE A level, 24 months is in January and July, under the 18 months in July. If transference of courses between transferring to GCE is transferable to CIE as well. Under the course information of CIE lay level and Singapore GCE level, we have the registration period of February for May and June test and July for October, November test. In the GCE A level, it is March for October and November test. Examination fees are about 2,000 Singapore dollars as for AES and AT, A2, about $1,000 for GCE. Examination period is May and June and October and November. Under the GCE A level, October and November with Chinese oral in June and English oral in August. The result release time is different again, but we have mid-August for May and June test and mid-January for October and November test. And then finally, under GCE, January for October and November test. More information about the CIEA level and the Singapore GCEA level. All universities in the United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand and Canada, both have the same recommendation, but entry levels may vary depending on the course. Under the Singapore universities such as NUS, NTU, SUTD and SMU, CIE results may less favorable as compared to Singapore GCEA level. And again, if you're planning to study in Singapore, the GCEA level is much preferred. Exam papers for the different courses under the CIEA level and the Singapore GCEA level. For example, we will start with mathematics. We have AS paper one to six. A2, paper three and seven. Under the GCE, we have paper one and two. Under physics, under CIE, you have papers one, two, and three. Under A2, you have papers four and five. Under the GCE, A level, papers one, two, three, and four. Chemistry, AS paper one, two, three, a2 papers 4 and 5. Under the GCE A level, once again, paper 1, 2, 3, and 4. General paper, there's one choice, and that's paper 1 under CIE. Under Singapore GCE A level, it's papers 1 and 2. The grading system of CIE level and Singapore GCE A level is a star, which has to be 90% to 100%, and then Singapore GCE, there's nothing applicable. Under the a grade of CIE, you have 80% to 89, under GCE, 70% to above. As you look at the grades B, C, D, and E, and S and U, the grades are as follows, 70 to 79, 
60 to 69, and so forth on down. Look carefully at the screen so you can see that the different grades will be for A star all the way to U. Each subject varies on these grades. The difficulty of achieving an A star in CIE is almost the same as getting an A in Singapore GCE A level examination. Once again, look carefully at the, sc at the scores A star to U. The in depth studies of the CIE A level we have here are much broader in the sense of what you need to study compared to what it is under GCE A level, which is a much longer period of time. But looking at this, you will see that CIE is different from GCE A level. Students who are not satisfied with the outcome may make an appeal as the following. Students number one is to fill out a submit appeal and examination results form to academic support within seven working days of the release of these results. Number two, academic support is an acknowledge the receipt of appeal within two working days and submit the list of students who appeal their examination results to the chief examiner who will draw out the relevant examination papers for review. Part three, with advice from the chief examiner, chairman of the examination board, will designate a marker to review the appeal, provide feedback and recommendations. All comments are to be donated, are documented in the appeal of examination results form. Number four, the examination board will review all appeal of examination result forms and decide on the final outcome of each appeal this decision is final. And finally, part five. Academic support will inform each student who appeal of the final decision within four weeks from the date of appeal and update any change to result based on the outcome of the appeal. The most important thing is that you must do this within seven working days and then you will be told within four weeks of the results. If you have any questions, you can refer to the student handbook on page 44 for more information. Graduation certificate criteria, A level. Awarded a graduation certificate for grade 12 students, the, the criteria for the award of an FIS graduate certificate is as followed. English level, level language requirements, attaining IELTS 6 or above, or a passing grade of E or better for the graduation examination and general paper. Students may submit an IELTS score resulting before the 31st of December of the year of the graduation. Part B, let's look a little bit more in detail. Graduation certificates classification relates to pass, pass with merit, and honors. The criteria of these three parts are grade E or better in two more core modules. Criteria under the pass of merit, grade C or better in three core modules. And under honors, grade A or better in three core modules. For Singapore Cambridge A level H2 modules or Cambridge International A level modules only, please again refer to the student handbook for pages 28 to 30 for more information. Attendance, Part C, Record, Graduation Certificate Classification and Criteria. First of all, to pass an overall attendance record of 90% or better. A pass with merit, overall attendance, a record of 95% or better. For honors, overall attendance record of 100%. Letter D, or Part D, is behavior, maintaining a demerit point of less than 10 points, total equal 30 points. And Part, three, part E, additional requirements for graduation certificate with honors. Only students in the A-level elite program are el eligible. And Part 2, or Number 2, only class monitors or CCA leaders are eligible. 
If again you have questions, please do not hesitate to ask, but most importantly, go to the student handbook on page 28 to 30 for more information. The graduation certificate criteria. With regard to the specific breakdown of the grades that court counts towards the academic results, as stated in items B, in this section they are as follows. For students graduated in 2019, we have the 18-month A-level program intensive and the 24-month A-level program. Graduation examination needs to be at 70%. Mock examination and unit examination, 10% and an A of average of all unit assessment of 20% with the total marks of 100%. The same will go under the 24-month program, graduation examination, 70%, unit assessment, 30%, the total of 100%. Or extended the A-level course of 2020 for students graduating in or after 2020, 18th-month program, graduation examination, 50%. Promotion examination, an average of all promotion examination, 30%. And unit, exam unit assessment, average of all unit assessments. This is under the 18th month program, a total of 100%. Under the 24 month program, we have the graduation examination of 50%. Promo examination, an average of all promo examinations of 30%. Finally, unit examination, average of all unit assessment of 20%. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to look at page 28 to 30 and more information. Additional information concerning the graduation certificate criteria. For CIE A-level students, they may use CIA A-level results to replace graduation examination results if they take extra external CIE A-level examination before the completion of their course. Students who have already been awarded with graduation certificates may not eligible for the graduation certificate when they extend the course. For students who fail to meet the graduation certificate criteria and extend the course. All unit assessments are included if students extend for the use of for the same A-level courses. For example, GCE A-level students extend for GCE A-level courses or CIE A-level students extend for CIE A-level courses. Let me repeat that one more time. All the unit assessments are included if students extend for the same A-level course. For example, GCE A-level students extend for GCE A-level course or CIE A-level students extend for CIE A-level courses. The most important thing is only unit assessments during the extended course are included in students take different A-level courses. Finally, failure to meet the graduation certificate criteria, students who fail to meet the graduation certificate criteria will not be issued with the graduation certificate. He or she will only be eligible for a certificate of completion. Award of a certificate of completion for students continued. For graduation, for grades 12 students, the criteria for award of an FIS certificate completion are as followed. Duration, take the course at least six months before the graduation examination and complete the course. Part B, modules, take at least two core modules. For GCE, A level H2 modules or CIE, A level modules only. And once again, I can't stress enough, if you have questions, you are to ask, and also you have, you can refer to student handbooks page 28 to 30 for more information if you have any questions concerning the graduation certificate. The graduation certificate criteria for O-level. For grade 10 students, the criteria for the award of an FIS certificate of completion are as follows. The duration, take the course at least six months before the final examination and complete the course. 
modules take at least three core modules. O and A level, there is also the failure to meet the certificate of completion criteria. Students who fail to meet the certificate of completion criteria will only be issued an academic transcript and a copy of the verification of studies. Payment is required for the verification of these studies. So, if you do fail, this is all that you'll have. One more time, failure to meet the certificate of completion. Students who fail, they will only be issued an academic transcript and a copy of the verification of studies. Payment is required for verification of studies. Refer to handbook, page 31, if you have questions. This completes the third, the second part of course information. Thank you.